Welcome listeners of WHFB AM 1060 and WIMS AM 1420 as we launch another edition of the Green Radio Network. Here on the Green Radio Network, we'll bring you a variety of green topics and the latest information on green technology and transportation. This program features environmental leaders throughout northern Indiana and the entire nation. The Green Radio Network is sponsored by NERPC, the Northwestern Indiana Regional Planning Commission, and the award-winning South Shore Clean Cities. Both entities are leaders in the environmental industry and work together to bring cleaner air and more sustainable living to northern Indiana. Now to introduce Carl Lissick, Executive Director of South Shore Clean Cities and the host of the show. Well, thank you for that introduction. And today our guests are Mr. Gary Evers, Transportation Projects Manager for the Northwestern Indiana Regional Planning Commission, or NERPSI, and James Winters, the Regional Planner and Policy Analyst for NERPSI. Thank you, gentlemen, for being here today. They actually changed my title. Oh, okay. What is your title? It's uh, I'm a Transit Planner now. Transit Planner. Well, congratulations on that, James. Thank you. So that's wonderful. So at, the, at our show today, I know James is expecting a new baby very shortly so congratulations thank you thank you very much so we're excited about that so we're going to have a new nerpsy baby that's right (laughs) i like it i like it so it's going to love transit (laughs) that's wonderful (laughs) so uh, again you know nerpsy is the sponsor of this program and and nerpsy is no stranger to our listening audience but if you could just tell us a little bit about some of the the work that you do gary i know that you've been with nerpsy for many years and you've been involved with so many of the uh, improvements for air quality here in northwestern Indiana. Uh, yeah, for uh, the last 15 years, I've I've uh, handled the uh, congestion mitigation air quality grant program, mm-hmm. and each year, uh, um, like in Porter Counties, they're allocated three and a half million. Uh, Laporte County is allocated six hundred thousand in this type of money that can be used for projects that relieve congestion, reduce emissions, and otherwise. Uh, uh, improve uh, air quality uh, throughout the region. Sure, and, and I'm sure we can see n- there's probably numerous projects that people don't even realize that nerpsy has been involved with for the 15 years that you're uh, talking about. Oh, yeah. I, I mean, everything from uh, uh, propane uh, fuel for uh, City of LaPorte's transit mm-hmm. department to uh, E85 fueled uh, buses and uh, motor vehicles to uh, some highway con- uh, construction projects that actually were needed to eliminate bottlenecks and reduce emissions. Oh, ex- exciting stuff. And so, and James, I know you, you transit planners. Talk a little bit about what you do. Great. Uh, I am. Uh, I recently moved over into being the NERPC transit planner. And what I do is I, I work with uh, providers of transit in the region to, to coordinate to solve problems, to, uh, to coordinate to, to figure out funding issues for transit, uh, and to try and find the best way to to get transit in as many communities as possible in northwestern Indiana, which is a tough job. It's very tough. It's, yeah. um, we're we're seeing a lot of. Uh, it's difficult because uh, you know federal funding is is becoming more and more constricted with with uh, transit, and so but we see that benefit. You know, not only in air quality, mm-hmm. which is of course akin to what what you do, but but also just in in quality of life and having options. Transit is. Is becoming more and more important. I totally agree, and you know, as we as we talk about the quality of life here in Northwest Indiana, uh, I think you know more of our communities are looking at potentially implementing uh, more transit-oriented types of programs. So, um, so as we talk about uh, the transportation improvement pro- program, or what's called TIP, Gary, uh, what does it do? Uh, essentially, the TIP uh, is a uh, a four-year list of projects surface transportation projects that will uh, improve our highways, uh, improve transit, improve commuter rail, uh, anything surface transportation related with funding that comes from the U.S. Department of Transportation. We produce this document every other year. Uh, The current list uh, is uh, set for adoption uh, at our board meeting in May. Uh, we've got roughly uh, $850 million worth of stuff uh, in this list uh, through all uh, transit modes. But this is a, something that's required of us because we're a uh, metropolitan planning organization uh, designated so by the governor of Indiana. Uh, and so we uh, are 
it's through our tip that we actually allocate dollars to these projects. And so like every community in, in Lake and Porter are involved with, uh, with the tip. Uh, to, to a certain uh-huh. extent, uh, many, many, many of our cities and towns, all of our counties have federal aid projects that are funded through uh, whose funding is represented in this tip. And this is actually the last uh, uh, procedural hurdle that they must cross in order to get funding for federal funding for their projects. Sure. And, and again, I know as we're talking about this transportation improvement program, I know there's uh, some things that you just mentioned that are out for public comment. Uh, why don't you talk a little bit about that? Well, it is. Uh, we've got several documents out for public comment now. Mm-hmm. But uh, it, it, first is a, uh, a document we call our conformity determination. Uh, this is a, uh, a mathematical exercise that we go through to show that with the addition of all these, tr- the implementation of all these transportation projects, uh, our air quality will not be diminished. Uh, the second item is a an amendment to our long range plan. We are including two significant transit projects, uh, the Westlake Corridor in Lake County, and the double tracking of Nickty's uh, rail line between the Miller Station in Gary and downtown Michigan City. And finally, it's the transportation improvement program itself, which uh, demonstrates uh, how uh, financially how those projects and when those projects will be implemented. So how can the people, how how can the general public see this document and maybe potentially make comments on this, Gary? We have uh, uh, a number of uh, ways through which that can happen. We have a a number of public open houses, some of which have already occurred. Mm -hmm. Um, I believe we have one, uh, uh, one's coming up on March 28th, 29th, and 30th um, in Munster, Michigan City, and Gary, respectively. Uh, you can see the schedules, identify the locations by going to our website at www.nerpsy.org. Uh, You can call us at area code 219-763-6060 and make an inquiry. Um, uh, We are also uh, providing this information through venues such as this. Mm -hmm. Uh, But uh, the easiest way is simply to to reach us through our website. Um, If uh, for comments uh, specifically, uh, specifically addressed to uh, a a particular project we also have a comment line that you can call in on so uh, or a uh, a web address comments at nerpsy.org okay it's an email address to to email us comments on anything transportation related uh specific or not to any of the documents that we have uh, out for public comment and I know there's there's just a lot of activity that's going on in our area right now. And I think that's, you know, some of the comments that people will, will say is like, well, I'm working during the day. I can't make some of these meetings. But I, I know that, you know, that uh, working with NERPSI is that NERPSI is always trying to accommodate, um, you know, different people's schedule and wants comment both positive and negative because this is the opportunity for the general public to react to some of these things that are going on uh, with some of these planning sessions. So and it's important to note that uh, a few- most of these uh, public meetings mm-hmm. are in the evening. So, uh, so Gary mentioned uh, Monster, Michigan City, and Gary. Mm-hmm. Each of those meetings are from six to eight p.m. So wonderful, and, and just just a great venue. And again, I think um, if you could just give out the website again with uh, with all the information, just uh, www.nerpsy.org. Right, and so uh, again, you know, as as we see a, a lot of uh, changes not only going on with our uh, country with uh, some of the new administration, we we see a lot of new. Uh, quality of life in uh, uh, construction projects like the West Lake and the double tracking um, uh, going, you know, potentially that, that are going to happen in our area, which is, which is exciting. And again, you know, uh, reducing emissions by taking vehicles off uh, the road are, you know, the, the, some of the work that uh, you're involved with. So, um, so what is the process for creating a new transportation improvement program? What, what, how do you do that? It, um, it, it it differs. It, it actually uh, uh, differs by mode. Uh, for instance, on the highway side of projects, 
uh, for those types of local projects. Uh, we do a solicitation periodically and ask the cities, towns, counties, um, how do you want to spend your money for the next X, uh, next number of years? Mm -hmm. And they submit project requests to us. We have, uh, or, or rather the stakeholders have developed a competitive scoring process and those projects are selected, uh, publicly in a, in a, uh, very, uh, sometimes overly visible and transparent way. Um, the, uh, the state projects, there's a, a lot of what we are including in our tip are projects that were selected by the state of Indiana, mm -hmm. the, the department of transportation, uh, that are on their own network, uh, of roadways. And, uh, those projects, a lot of times are suggested by people making comments to them by contacting INDOT and saying, Hey, we need to really repair this bridge over, uh, such and such a Creek at this particular location. INDOT looks at it. And many, many times I've had this happen to me where I've suggested something a year later, it appears in their tip. So never underestimate the, the power of, uh, of commenting to INDOT, to NERPC, uh, to any public agency, uh, they, they do in fact, listen, as I've seen in the case of INDOT with regard to transit, it's a very similar process mm -hmm. where the public transit operators develop their own selection system and they prioritize their projects and how the money gets spent. And then those projects, uh, uh are in, uh, included in the tip. Sure. So as we talk about, you know, some of those transportation projects, why don't you elaborate a little bit on that and some of the, the, the undertakings that are going on now in our area? Sure. Well, the, uh, the two big projects, like Gary mentioned, are the West Lake and uh, double tracking expansions for the South Shore line. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, you know, I think that that's gotten a lot of press. And so what we're doing right now is we're including those projects in the transportation improvement plan so that they can be eligible for funding from the, from the state and feds. Um, so if you have any specific questions on that, probably the best place to, to take that information or to find information or to, or to comment on it would be to, to Nick D directly, but you're more than welcome to comment on, as part of our process as well. But basically the, the Westlake corridor is a nine mile Southern extension um, going down along the uh, the audience can't see that I'm gesturing with my hand, but it's, <laughs> it's going down along the uh, westernmost border of Lake County uh, between uh, Dyer and Hammond. Uh, and that's going, to, um, that's going to bring more people from southern Lake County closer to the train so that they can take it into, into Chicago. Mm -hmm. And that's part of this effort that has been happening regionally out here to, to kind of better link our economy to Chicago's economy. You know, Chicago has one of the, mo of the world's most vibrant, uh, incredible economies, and what can we do to, to bridge this gap between us so that we can share mutually? Well, the, the Westlake Corridor is going to be a big part of that. Um, also, that double-tracking project, it's, like Gary mentioned, it's a 24 miles between Gary and Michigan City, and it's going to include station upgrades at five stations, and that's going to make sure that, that people here in Michigan City uh, can get to Chicago quicker mm -hmm. uh, so that they have more opportunities to commute into work but still have that, you know, that house that's right next to the dunes and that, that quality of life that we like out here. Sure. And, and I think, you know, for tourism reasons also, I, I know that, you know, working with like the electric vehicle a market and things, I think, you know, a lot of the, the feedback that we've gotten from the Chicago area is like, well, it's, it's great for us to try to get down to the Chicago market, you know, but you know, taking the train has been a great uh, opportunity. And then with the bike, uh, the, uh, the accessibility of getting uh, bikes onto the train, that's helped with, um, you know, the different tourism uh, types of things. And, you know, it's just, it's exciting, you know, and again, I think, you know, just as a, as a resident of, uh, of Lake County, you know, I, I look at this as change and, you know, uh, change is something I think that we all just need to be aware of and in, embrace. And, uh, you know, again, I think there's been so many different partners that have been involved with this that, you know, um, in, this is just, just as um, NERFC's decision. It's a multitude of partners that have been working on this uh, collectively, not just within the last year, but for years. So in, in addition to that, there's a lot of really great transit that happens outside of outside of the South Shore line as well. We have um, 
In this, in this tip, we have uh, a number of projects for uh, demand response providers mm -hmm. you know, so that the, the people who typically use this service are uh, people who are elderly or disabled or maybe just don't have a vehicle at mm -hmm. the time at this time. And so uh, it's a really important service to allow them to have the same freedom that, that everyone else enjoys. And again, taking more vehicles off the road. Um, so South Lake Community Services, Porter County Energy and, and Community Services, Opportunity Enterprises, they're all great examples of that. Um, we also have uh, some fixed routes. So the city of Gary is expanding their, uh, their GPTC bus service. Uh, and that includes the Liverpool Broadway Corridor, sure. which is mm -hmm. bus rapid transit. It's going to be very important for that community. Uh, we also have uh, Valparaiso with the V-Line. Right, um, a, lot, a lot of great usage with that. That's been a very uh, hugely successful program for our area. Right, right. There's a lot of really great things. No, it's um, exciting. Yeah. So um, you're listening to the Green Radio Network here on AM 1420 WIMS Radio and AM 1060 WHFB. I'm your host, Carl Lissick. We'll be right back with NERPSI's Gary Evers and James Winters. You're listening to the Green Radio Network on AM 1420, WIMS Radio, and AM 1060 WHFB. This is Carl Lissick. We'll be right back after this message. There's nothing more important than spending time outdoors with your family. That's why it's so important to do whatever you can to keep our air clean. It's good for the environment and good for the health of your friends and family. Take a closer look at how pork quality is affecting our community. Across the three counties of Northwest Indiana, recent studies from the American Lung Association show that 9% of adults suffer from asthma, 4% live with chronic bronchitis, 38% have a form of cardiovascular disease, and 10% of the children in Lake and LaPorte counties struggle with pediatric asthma. Now, the number of adults with asthma is nearly that of adults with diabetes. Consider how diabetics make adjustments to their diet in order to be as healthy as possible. Everyone can make adjustments to improve air quality and the quality of life for those who live with asthma and other lung diseases. Northwest Indiana, clean air, think green, breathe easy. A message from NERPSI. Thank you again for joining us on AM 1420 WIMS Radio and AM 1060 WHFB on this edition of the Green Radio Network. I'm Carl Lissick of South Shore Clean Cities, here to bring you the latest information on green projects and topics across the nation. Our guests today are Mr. Gary Evers. He's the Transportation Projects Manager for the Northwestern Indiana Regional Planning Commission, or NERPSI, and James Winters, Regional Planner, Transit Planner, right, for NERPSI. And again, thank you for being here today. And so we're just talking about some of the different great things that um, both of you are involved with, with NERPSI. But so as we talk about NERPSI, so how can NERPSI help protect our environment by selecting projects that go into this transportation improvement plan? What uh, we're looking for, um, not necessarily in this particular tip, but in the one that uh, will follow it, is uh, uh, looking at the uh, the impacts of projects before uh, they are selected for funding. Um, the federal government is requiring us to uh, implement a performance-based uh, project selection process. And we have until next year to de devise that process. So that's one of the things we're looking at now. We we want to look at the traffic impact of these activities, the emissions, you know, the greenhouse gas impacts, mm -hmm. et cetera. Um, we be began requiring uh, uh, on construction projects uh, a number of years ago that green infrastructure be utilized to the extent practicable. Uh, we've not yet gone back to measure the impact of that. Um, but we are constantly uh, revising and updating our selection processes uh, to reflect current practice. And of course, uh, to reduce congestion, reduce emissions, uh, greenhouse gases, et cetera, in everything that we do, be it a maintenance project to a, uh, bus procurement project, uh, all types of activities, we we uh, uh, will, in fact, be uh, undertaking those analyses, uh, a more stringent review of those processes sure. in the future. You know, James and uh, Gary, I, I know that there's a lot of talk about smart mobility, smart cities, green cities, um, and how that's playing an effect, you know, in, into not only Northwest Indiana, but into our countries and, you know, um, 
uh, autonomous vehicles and, and things like that. And it's like, well, how do we stay as a region? How do we stay up on all this new technology and, and all these different things that are going on in the country? Well, I think that I've got a lot of mixed feelings about, okay. about autonomous vehicles and, and smart vehicles and that kind of thing, because I think that, you know, we, we should definitely be looking ahead. There's a lot of really, really excellent uh, benefits to to investing in, in that kind of uh, feature in an automobile, and that's for sure. But at the same time, we also have tools available to us now that maybe we're not using as, as robustly as we can. So, for instance, you know, um, I'm going to bring this back to transit, of course, because I'm a transit planner, but, but uh, you know, for every bus that is on the road mm-hmm. that's full, if you have 30 passengers on that bus, you just took 30 cars off the road. Right. Because we know that... Uh, Typically, as Americans, we are 90% of the time going to be in a car as a single occupant. Oh, absolutely. And, and mm-hmm. so, um, so, you know, having a, a, a system that's more integrated with transit means that people are going to be walking more. People are going to be leaving their cars at home more. Mm-hmm. Uh, and this is, this is something that we can do right now that we don't have to wait for autonomous vehicles or that kind of thing. And, uh, and we have more and more transit options that, that don't rely on uh, what we might call like a typical fossil fuel or diesel model. Sure. You know, there's compressed natural gas vehicles. There's, I mean, heck, there's even solar vehicles coming down the pipe at some point. Um, and so this is stuff that's very, very close and, and th- that we can grasp right now. Mm-hmm. So I, I would say, you know, in order for us to be green and competitive and smart, I think that involves investing in, in transit options. Um, as well as, you know, thinking ahead to all of the self-driving cars and sure. that kind of thing, too. Sure. Gary, any comments on that? Uh, as well, you know, I, I, that is genuinely true. We're, we're, we're also investing heavily in bicycle and pedestrian facilities, not yeah. just the off-road trails, the separated trails, which are great. We're mm-hmm. seeing a lot of people out there. There's a big demand for those facilities, uh, but also for plain old walkable sidewalks and we funded uh, our first ever standalone sidewalk replacement project in the city of Laporte this wow. year mm-hmm. uh, that will do nothing but take a whole area and give them new sidewalks rip out trees that have uh, uh, caused the sidewalks to, to not be walkable and uh, replace all the trees as well so we're looking at, at pretty much what uh, amounts to a renewal of our urban infrastructure sure. uh, and making our neighborhoods, making our downtowns more livable. Mm-hmm. And, and that's kind of the thrust behind our, our uh, uh, regional plan is to enhance the livability of, of our cities. Uh, from an investment point of view, what I'm seeing in NDOT is a movement away from the full rebuilding of roadways. In other words, not ripping up Uh, the subsoil and everything beneath the pavement, but they are maintaining the pavement as it is. Okay. Uh, They are uh, putting new decks on bridges rather than replacing the whole bridge. Uh, It's uh, kind of a new world that we're in right now. And they're figuring out new ways, more efficient ways to spend public money. You know, as you say that, Gary, I know like with our new um, administration uh, from Washington, it it appears that, um, it's been, you know, no secret that they're going to be spending millions and millions of dollars on road infrastructure and, in, uh, you know, preparing for the future. And I, I think this, again, this is just an exciting time for our area, you know, not only for jobs, but for, you know, uh, road construction, <laughs> additional road construction projects moving, moving forward. And so, um, you know, it's interesting to hear that, you know, looking at some of the changes that have occurred with some of the policies and procedures, I, I just think that, you know, in the next couple of years that we're going to see a lot of different improvements going in and around uh, um, our area. Um, you know, one of the things, you know, you're talking about the 2040 plan, the award-winning 2040 plan. Um, I, I know that we're going to start planning for the 2050 plan in, in very shortly. And so, you know, as people talk about this, how can people get more involved in regional planning? Well, I think, you know, of course, come to the meetings. Yeah. Uh, that's, that's a great way to get involved. Um, come to the meetings and, and learn what, what's important, what your commissioner or your representative thinks it's important. Um, 
and 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 also just just call and write your commissioner. Mm-hmm. You can go to our website and you can you can see a full list of of our commissioners and you can find who your representative is, and you can uh, and that's their job. You can bug them. Uh, to have them tell us what to do. Well, you know, it's, it's funny that you say that because, I mean, with some of the work that we've been doing with some of our, our new newly elected leaders, a lot of times the comments that we get back from them is that I didn't really understand all the great things that NRFC does for our area. And I always like to say, you know, it's like the, the educational tool for our, our governmental leaders because NRFC is involved not only just in, you know, transportation modes, environmental modes. And so, you know, affecting land, air and water. And so, you know, NRFC is just a, such an important uh, um, plot in our, uh, you know, greening of our area, but then also improving the quality of life in our area. And I, you know, I just appreciate all the great work uh, that we have. So as we start to wrap up, why don't you recap some of these public meetings that are coming up uh, that people could uh, attend some of these uh, upcoming things with the uh, um, Westlake project and the, uh, the double tracking. Sure. So if you want to comment on anything at all in our transportation improvement plan, we actually have two meetings today uh, in, at the Hammond Civic Center. So at, from 2 to 4 p.m. and 6 to 8 p.m. Uh, and then on the 28th, on March 28th, we have uh, a meeting at the Munster Center for Visual and Performing Arts, 6 to 8 p.m., March 29th, uh, at Michigan City Hall, also from 6 to 8 p.m., and March 30th, which is also my birthday, uh, we have a meeting at in Gary at 504 Broadway, which is the old bank building. Okay, wonderful. Uh, and again, I, I think uh, um, the, your website again for listeners? It's at www.nerpsy.org. And that will do it for today's edition of the Green Radio Network. I'm your host, Carl Lissick. Thanks again to our guests, Mr. Gary Evers and Mr. James Winters from NERPSI. And be sure to join us again on AM 1420 WIMS Radio and AM 1060 WHFB for the next edition of the Green Radio Network and visit us online at SouthShoreCleanCities.org. Thank, Thank you, you guys. Thank you.